In July 22, 2552, United Nations Space Command detected a massive Covenant presence on the planet of Reach. The Covenant, a conglomeration of alien species that was bent on the destruction of the entire human race, had somehow beat UNSC sensors. This caught most elements of the UNSC by surprise. The planet had not been warned by the Office of Naval Intelligence who had predicted an attack within the sum of only a few months. The Winter Contingency, a plan for when the Covenant made landfall on a planet, was put into place. The battle lasted for just a month and was one of the bloodiest of the war. Ultimately, Reach fell with a Pyrrhic Covenant victory. The entire surface of Reach was melted down by sustained Covenant fire from their ships above, a process known as glassing. This battle was, however, very unique. The humans were initially winning, and winning was a rare thing for the UNSC. Ultimately, the humans lost, though. But what if they hadn't? What if they had actually won the Battle of Reach? Let's get into it. Reach was one of the largest strongholds and most valuable asset of the UNSC, save for Earth. It was largely known for its military presence, including shipyards, military headquarters, and held the operations of the Office of Naval Intelligence. The loss of Reach was far more than simply being outgunned by the Covenant. Unlike on other planets, Reach had an exceptional chance of winning any assault upon it. Let's look at why it failed. We know from several sources that the Covenant and UNSC were almost on par when it came to ground forces and ground technology. The Covenant may have had shielding and slightly better technology, but it was possible for the UNSC to hold their own in a fair fight. The major losses came due to the fact that the human warships could not contend with the Covenant ones. It would take upwards of five to eight ships sacrificing themselves to cause losses of one to three alien ships. To paraphrase a Covenant official, they drown us in their own blood to win. This combined with something known as Operation Red Flag, which crippled UNSC forces by holding them back so that a Covenant ship could be captured, taken back to the home base of the Covenant, so that a, the head of the Covenant, known as a Prophet, could be captured. The Prophet would then be ransomed in hopes of winning the war. This would be the ultimate reason that Reach would fall. This means that, unlike in canon, we see the full resources of Reach utilized. Operation Red Flag had required them to be held back, but in this scenario, they would not be. This means we'd also be utilizing both Spartan II and Spartan III's, which were integral to the operations throughout the planet. Now, threat has been detected. Hey, what's, what's going on? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, Rick here from Certifiably In Game. Don't mind me reloaded, just thought I'd interject with a bit of information for you. Do you know that the Spartan program wasn't actually invented to fight aliens? They were super soldiers, bred to put down the potential conflict brewing between the inner and outer colonies. Curious, isn't it? If the Covenant hadn't shown up, what would the Halo universe look like? Embroiled in a state of civil war? Yeah, anyway, those Spartan II recruits were trained from Reach by the shady Office of Naval Intelligence, which conducted some unethical experiments to say the least. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. Honestly, I could go on for hours, but I guess I should do that over on my channel. Perhaps you'd care to join me after you're done here? See you later. Hey guys, hello? Hey, you back? Wow, I mean, I love certifiably in-game, but they really did not need to hack into my systems. Huh. I probably should go over there and return the favor. You guys might want to check what's coming up. But anyway, like they said, back to business. With the Spartan 2 and Spartan 3 units now actively deployed, along with all defense forces on reach, we can begin to see where operations to defend the planet would start to be successful. Not only would the Covenant be pushed back more effectively, but thousands to hundreds of thousands would most likely be evacuated. A lot of these people died during Operation Red Flag, which caused the United Nations Space Command some bad PR, to say the least. Operation Red Flag required that a large part of the population was never told about the attack until it was too late. With forewarning, evacuations could begin and effective counterattack could commence. It is important to note that while the initial attack would be repelled, it would probably be called the First Battle of Reach. Certainly when the Covenant came back a second time, most assuredly with overwhelming numbers, they would win in the Second Battle of Reach. But in the First Battle, the Super Mac weapons, which we saw beforehand, would be extremely effective. 
as effective as they were in canon. But this time they would have both Spartan 3s and Spartan 2s fully assisting. It would probably result in the Spartan 2s and Spartan 3s being utilized to take over other Covenant ships or blow them up to stop the ship superiority factor that the Covenant always had. But even if Reach was successfully defended, we can assume that most of the events with the Pillar of Autumn and Halo installations would still have occurred. Captain Keys, Master Chief, and the crew were already preparing for their own assault. Their mission was considered critical, so they wouldn't have been kept back to defend Reach. And it's still likely they would have been pursued by Covenant ships. After the first attempt on Reach, evacuation of civilians to Earth would occur. Though, following the Coal Protocol, would probably take a lot longer than the civilians would prefer. The movement of valuable resources of equipment, ships, and men would be transferred to Earth, and we would likely see Spartans distributed back to Earth defenses as well as other key strongholds. Ironically, the biggest impact would most likely be to that of the Covenant. For a while, even before Reach had been discovered, issues had been erupting within the Covenant hierarchy itself. Spiritual leader of the Covenant, Prophet of Truth, had long been planning to replace the Sangeli, also known as elites. The elites had been protectors of the prophets and indeed the frontline covenant for as long as history had remembered. We saw the betrayal of the Sangeli happen on Earth, but with the failure of Reach, it's probable that the Prophet of Truth would use this as an excuse to replace them. Whether the fleet was at a standstill above Reach or a secondary covenant fleet was sent, it is likely that we would see, as we did in canon, that the Jura, the Jura Helia, the Jurilina, the la 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 the Brutes would overthrow and kill the elites. This is when we would see the beginning of the Great Schism. The Schism, which ultimately would lead to the Covenant Civil War, was a defining moment for humanity. It is possible that instead of a human elite alliance on Earth fighting the Covenant, we would see it on Reach. Though, ultimately Reach would still fall and an attack on Earth would still occur. Only this time, the UNSC would still have a large contingent of Spartans, they would have their elite allies, and the military tech that had been pulled from Reach. The ultimate consequence of defending Reach would be that Earth would have far less destruction upon it. Reach would have fell no matter what, but Earth and millions of people would have survived. It's important to remember that this is, of course, an educated guess, uh, a what if, based on information and what I've read. But even if we were sure that my scenario was what would have happened, hindsight is 2020. At the time of the attack on Reach, humanity was dying and on the brink of destruction. Operation Red Flag was a good idea, and sacrificing Reach to save the human race? Definitely worth it. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments below. I do want to take a special moment to thank Certifiably In Game. They are an awesome bunch of guys. If you haven't, go check out their content, subscribe, and tell them the Lore Reloaded said hi. And if you like my stuff, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe as well. And guys, I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.